Hello America, I'm Pastor Mark Burns, and you're watching Lift Your Voice, and I'm so that you decided to tune in to this broadcast because we have a special guest for you. That is none other than the pastor of the four excuse me, Los Angeles, California. He's also the host of international television broadcast, A Miracle for You. He is the third presiding bishop of the full gospel about the church international. That is none other than the man, the bishop, the pastor, the husband, and father, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon. Welcome to the show, sir. God bless you, man of God. Good to see you and good to be with you. Bless Thank you, man. You Absolutely. Bishop, we want to jump right on in it because you have a lot going on in the kingdom. Uh, we here, uh, a special edition live on location at the 20th Full Gospel Baptist Church International. Bishop Friday, Bishop Morton will be announcing his successor. You've been here for how long have you been with the fellowship? I have been uh, with the fellowship functioning in uh, in a role since 1997. So I've been about 16, 16 years. years out of the 20. So you still came in in the very uh, introduction of the fellowship. Yeah, actually, I was I wasn't a part of the fellowship when it began. I was one of the first men to speak in the fellowship. I was on the conference agenda in one of their first meetings. So wow, yeah. wow. How do you feel now that Bishop Morton? will be announcing his successor. And I wish you can give us a secret since you're the third presiding bishop who it is, but we have to wait till Friday. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, certainly uh, I will allow the presiding bishop to make the announcement <laughs> as to who is uh, succeeding him. Sure. Uh, and again, I, you know, I, I believe that uh, Bishop Morton is and always has been a man with a vision and a man who was very uh, keen and clear about the purpose uh, for which God anointed him and uh, and brought this organism to fruition. Uh, you know, I believe that everything has to be evaluated in light of its purpose. Sure. God does not uh, uh, God does not uh, uh, give success or he does not evaluate success rather by numbers or by accolades or by those things. But God evaluates success. Success in the kingdom of God is the fulfillment of purpose sure. and assignment. And uh, I believe that uh, the presiding bishop, Bishop Morton, believes uh, that his assignment as relates to the stewardship of this is come to uh, an end. And uh, I think, you know, he is being proactive and exemplary sure. in, um, you know, announcing a successor uh, putting forward a means of uh, of succession that makes that makes sense, and uh, so you know he gave all of the bishops on his council an opportunity to put their names forward if they okay. wanted to be considered. So your name is in the hat. N no, I did not put my name forward. Okay. I, I was not interested in. <laughs> I was not interested in that. I did not believe that that was something that the Lord had for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, moving forward, you believe wholeheartedly uh, in 2015 when Bishop uh, uh, he's going to announce the success of this Friday, but in 2015 when he actually turns over uh, the presiding office, the presiding bishop office to his successor, you believe the fellowship will continue to move forward, grow, and not deteriorate. Again, I believe you know the fellowship will go into its next necessary uh, phase. And, and whatever that is, obviously, is in the mind of the Spirit of God. And we pray that will be in the mind of, of Bishop Morton's successor. Uh, I believe that uh, if a thing indeed is called and ordained by God, it will live beyond its successor. And so I believe uh, that the will of the Lord will be done. Uh, I believe that what Bishop Morton has given his life and energy and time to these 20 years uh, will continue to be fruitful. Amen. Amen. So we could say on national television, you most definitely would not be the successor of the full gospel about the church. You fellowship. can say whatever you, you can... desire to say, man of God. I, I am uh, I am standing and sitting here with you and, and it's your show. You can say what you I want. I can say what I want to Amen. say. Amen. Bishop, uh, 
Full Harvest International for those who are in the Los Angeles area. Why do they need to come to Full Harvest? Well, Full Harvest International Church is a multicultural, multi-ethnic um, uh, ministry uh, where we truly do endeavor uh, to preach the gospel of the kingdom and teach people the uncompromised word of God. I, I believe that in this day and age, uh, people need not just inspiration, but they need sure. information. Sure. Uh, and they need revelation from the spirit of, of grace. Uh, this is a prophetic ministry that God has given us the ability to oversee. Uh, and it's a place, quite frankly, where you are going to encounter the presence of God as well as the word of God. And uh, m many years ago, the spirit of the Lord said to me that the church of the 21st century cannot be a word church only. It must be a word church in the sense of a ministry that is rooted and grounded in the word of God, believing that God's word is his inerrant, infallible, inspired uh, declaration. But it also must be a presence church. The church of the 21st century must be a church where people encounter the presence of God. People need to come to Full Harvest because you're going to encounter God there. Wow. Uh, you're going to have a God encounter in that ministry, uh, and it will change your life forever. Wow. This, listen, we're going to cut the break because when we come back, I want to talk about the new docuseries that's that's about to release. Matter of fact, they not too long ago just released a trailer. That is The Preacher's of LA is making a lot of noise and we're going to get to hear directly from one of the the stars I can say yeah, <laughs> of the, I one of the, that, the, the pastors uh, that they're following we're going to come after the break we're going to come back we're going to hear your heart about that for those of you who are watching don't you dare touch that now and hear what Bishop Clarence McClendon some amazing word that you can hear that can really change your life we'll be right back after this what's up everybody this is your boy Isaac Curry and you're watching live your boys with my boy the greatest pastor in the country, Pastor Mark Burns. Keep it locked. Welcome back, America. Again, I'm Pastor Mark, and I'm so blessed that you tuned in to lift your voice right here on the Impact Network. And I'm blessed to have my guest, that is Bishop Clarence E. McClendon. Bishop, again, thank you, man, for stopping by, being on the show. Preachers of L.A. Bishop, a lot of noise is going on. A major network has released is releasing a new docu series that's going to follow four pastors, and you can elaborate more about the preachers of LA. Talk about it. Well, again, it, it really is a docu series. Uh, it's not a reality show. Okay. Um, and again, I, I don't I'm, I don't watch reality mm -hmm. television, so I don't know what that really is. I understand uh, that it has a captivating sense in the American psyche, but, um, you know, I was approached, um, and I've been approached several sure. times for several things and have not, uh, uh, done them, but I was approached, uh, by Dr. Holly Carter, um, who has been a very key uh, person in merging faith, uh, and working in the entertainment industry in Los Angeles. I've known her for several years, uh, and she actually does a merge summit uh, that has been very instrumental in helping bridge the gap between uh, the kingdom of God and what goes on in the entertainment sure. industry. She's been in that uh, genre for quite some time. And uh, so when she approached me about the idea, of course, and some other people, I was, you know, you know not very... Uh, terribly interested in it sure. um, because, you know, I, I got a lot to do. I'm busy uh, and, uh, you know, I wasn't terribly interested. But, you know, uh, she began to talk to me about what it was that she wanted to accomplish. And I was very clear, you know, I'm very busy. Uh, I don't have time for a lot of mess. Right. I told him if you're looking for drama and conflict, you're not going to get that from me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when I prayed about it, uh, the Lord didn't tell me to do it, and he didn't tell me not to do it. What he reminded me of is certain things that he said to me. And like any father, I believe once your sons get to a certain age, uh, you guide them and you lead them and you direct them. And so, um, you know, uh, I talked to my wife about it, talked to my family about it, uh, had my intercessors begin to pray about it. And uh, one of the things that 
the Spirit of the Lord reminded me of say I, I have preached for years uh, that the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom, uh, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of relational influence. Sure. And anyone you refuse to relate to, you have also refused to influence. That's good. If you study the gospel, uh, the parable that Jesus gave in Matthew 13 uh, about uh, the wheat and the tear, and a lot of people relegate this parable to uh, the rapture, but this is not about the rapture. Uh, Jesus gives a parable in Matthew 13, and he basically says the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed into his field. Now, this is one of the parables that Jesus interprets for himself, uh, which is very interesting because most of the parables he allowed us to interpret, but this one he interprets himself. Right. And when he interprets this parable, and again, the word parable, parabole, comes from two Greek words, means to throw alongside. So a parable is a story that Jesus would cast alongside a spiritual truth in order to, uh, to demonstrate the spiritual truth. So he says, the kingdom of God, when it comes, the rule of God will be like a man who sowed good seed into his field. When Jesus interprets that parable, he says, the, the sower is the son of man. The good seed are children of the kingdom, mm -hmm. not children of the church, children of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the field is the world. The field is not the church. If you, if you place Jesus's interpretation of his parable on top of the parable, here's what he said. When the kingdom of God really begins to manifest, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to look like the son of man, Jesus, sowing children of the kingdom, good seed, into his field, the world, mm -hmm. not the church, right, right. The, world. the world. So I believe that one of the things that is happening here uh, with this, and the reason I'm involved in it, uh, is because I believe it is going to give people who would not come to my church, who don't come, who, who don't watch Christian television, another glimpse of what Christianity actually looks like mm -hmm. from the inside. Sure. And so, uh, again, I, I've sat with the executives and I, I said very clearly to them, you know, I am trusting uh, <laughs> my God, I'm trusting and placing confidence in relationships that I know, but very clearly. Uh, I told him there are things that I will and things I will not do. If you want this, you'll have to go somewhere else for it because this is what I'm going to do. And this is the dimension of access uh, that I will give you. And uh, I told him very clearly, if I don't like what I see, mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm done. How do you feel and do you think, because I've seen the clip, I've seen the, the, the promo, and, and, and I guess that's what's raising a lot of eyebrows already is the controversy already that's beginning to take place. How much should the world see in the life of the man or the woman of God and what they should not see? Again, I, I, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, say what should or shouldn't be seen. Mm -hmm. I don't mean, if, if, <laughs> I think people should read their Bibles uh, and understand <laughs> that uh, when Jesus first came on the scene, one of the first questions that was asked about him is, where do you live? And Jesus said, come and see. This is Jesus. Right. They were interested in uh, who this man was beyond the miracles, beyond walking sure. on water, beyond commanding elements. They said, where do you live? Jesus said in the red part of your Bible, come and see. So again, um, uh, I am I am not going to uh, make comment on what other men and or women of God okay. will do and or will show. I know what Clarence McClendon is going okay. to do and what Clarence McClendon is going to show. And I know whatever I do and show uh, will bring glory to my God yeah. uh, and edification, I pray, to the body of Christ. Now, again, people are entitled to their opinions sure. and anything... Uh, anyone who steps away from the crowd and steps and doesn't do the normal thing is going to be talked about. So that's what you're doing. The not normal. Again, I'm, I am walking through the doors that uh, 
are open to the ministry that God has committed to my care. I'm not trying to do anything. Sure. I didn't go to people. They came to you. They came to me, just like everything else that God has done for me. I never asked to go on television. I never asked to do a recording. Everything that I have ever done in the kingdom of God is something that was brought to me. It's not something that I sought to do. Wow, wow. So you believe wholeheartedly that this broadcast, Preachers of L.A., will have more of a positive influence on not just the body of Christ, because we have the body, we, we preach to the body of Christ, but you believe this will have a positive influence of those that do not believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that the content that Clarence McClendon <laughs> will give to this program uh, will in no way uh, bring dishonor to the name of Jesus or the body of Christ. So you say, I'm not speaking for no, no, nobody else on the show. I, I am not responsible for anybody else on the show. I'm only responsible for what is shown concerning Clarence McClendon and the ministry that God has committed to my care and the family that God has given me uh, to steward. And again, these are the followings of uh, very different men of God. I don't know all these men sure. of God. And so, again, what I would say uh, is to the people, I mean, you know, people are going to say what they want to say. Sure. But, uh, you know, uh, watch and see and come to your own evaluation. I mean, some of the things, I mean, in this show, you know, they'll, they'll, I'll, they'll be seeing uh, 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 strategy meetings that we have, uh, things that go on in our worldwide headquarters and the various, uh, uh, you know, things that are, uh, are connected to uh, running a ministry operation whose objective really is to touch people and save souls and bring uh, people into the kingdom of God. Bishop, you're successful. You're an author. You are a composer. You, you have you hit billboard charts. You have a successful church in Los Angeles, California. You also have offices in London, England. Talk about that. Yeah, we uh, are just now uh, finishing uh, uh, the establishment of Clarence E. McClendon Ministries in the UK. Uh, we do and have been doing a lot of ministry in Great Britain and the continent of Africa. Um, uh, for the last several years, um, with the exception perhaps of last year, uh, been doing meetings, conferences, crusades on the continent of Africa three or four times a year, also in Great Britain. And uh, London has just uh, been a significant hub for us, and God has done a number of things and led us to begin to open an office there that would help minister to the European continent as well as the continent of Africa. Uh, and so we're in the process of completing that now offices are up and going employees are functioning and Amen. uh and god is helping us to, to do that to the pastor that's watching this broadcast he just started you started preaching at the age of 15 yes sir and you took your first pastorate at the age of 19 yeah from the, your first pastorate starting at the age of 19 to now having offices in the united states and in africa and in london how how did you get from there to here, to the pastor that's watching you? What word of advice? Um, the first word of advice I would give is uh, from the revelation of the word of God. Um, there's a story that's told, actually recorded, I believe it's in the Gospel of Mark, where Jesus has been ministering uh, and he goes, the Bible says, a great while before day and goes to pray. And I believe it's Peter comes and says to him, all men seek for thee. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus was in prayer when one of his disciples told him, all men seek for thee. He wasn't trying to get engagements. He wasn't trying to have a successful ministry. He was in prayer. That's good. Uh, so my exhortation, first of all, is develop an intimate relationship with Jesus, a prayer life. That's good. If you are a praying man or praying woman, you will not have to ask for places to preach or places to minister. People will start looking for you. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I I've never asked anybody to preach anywhere. I've never uh, asked anybody to go anywhere 
to minister the gospel. Every door that has been opened uh, to me, God has opened it, and I believe he has opened it because I'm a man who diligently desires to be in his presence. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's the first thing that I would say. Develop and maintain an intimate relationship with God in prayer, uh, and your ministry will grow out of that fellowship. Ministry is not what you do in public. Mm -hmm. Ministry is what you receive in private. And, uh, and that is what is manifested in the public domain. And so um, that would be my first uh, instruction to any man or, or woman of God. I think because of multimedia now and television and all these things and because of what people see, they think this is what ministry is about. Right, right. No, mm -hmm. that's not. this is not what ministry is about. This is what you get to do if you have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Um, uh, so uh, I am concerned in that regard. And so that would be my, my exhortation. How do you balance, because you're a family man, yeah. all of that in ministry, what people see publicly, uh, but your family deals a lot of it privately. I'm a father of six children. My wife co-hosts. She travels with me. Six children. Six children. Bless him be his name. <laughs> I need a no. I need a miracle for me. I need a miracle. Uh, but so we, we we have challenges. Sure. Balance, balance. We hear we are traveling on the road constantly for television. How do you balance offices in London, Los Angeles? new docu-series, your books, your television broadcasts, your travel schedule, all of that at the same time, maintain a healthy relationship with your family. You know, again, I believe um, that this is something that you don't ever achieve. I think it's something that you're always in pursuit of and you always have to be sensitive uh, regarding. I, 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 you know, the the challenge to maintain uh, balance again for me is born out of a relationship with God in prayer I don't try to do everything I really um, endeavor to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit regarding what it is that I do and I have made certain agreements with sure. with the Lord uh, uh, I've opened the areas of my life to him uh, where I want and desire him to speak to me. Now, again, God can do anything and speak right. in any dimension, but specifically between me and the Lord, I have said, now, Lord, this area of my life, my family life, this, uh, I need you to speak to me about it. If, if I'm going this way, I need you to speak to me. And there are times when the Lord will say to me, you know what, you need to take today and, and forget all this and you just spend this with your wife and with your kids. You need, you know, my eight-year-old is with me here. Uh, he's homeschooled. Uh, he's got a tutor in that, and he's able to travel with us. My second eldest son is now my personal assistant. Uh, works with me in the ministry. He's a worship leader as well in our ministry. And so, again, uh, I, I try to keep the voice of the Spirit of God utmost in my life and try to listen to him and, and, and what, what, excuse, not try to listen. I do listen. listen. But my point is my desire is to stay attentive to his direction. Um, I'll never forget as a young pastor uh, and when the church was growing and, you know, we was doing five services and uh, you know, thousands of people were coming at, the, at that season of growth in the ministry. And I went before the Lord and I said to him, especially concerning being a father, being uh, a husband, doing all of these things. And I had a great example as a father. My father was a pastor. Um, uh, but he passed away. Uh, he was in his late 80s, when he, uh, his early 90s, actually, when he passed away. I was in my 20s. You do the math. Uh, but, um, and I went to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I, I don't know how to do this. Sure. I don't know how to manage all of this. And he took me to the story of Joseph, uh, and it, and I read the story of Joseph, Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, and what I noticed was every time that Joseph didn't know what to do, the angel of the Lord 
the spirit of God directed him, Absolutely. appeared to him in a dream and said, you know, don't be afraid to do to take Mary as your wife. Or when Herod was coming, the, the angel of the Lord came to him and the spirit of the Lord said something I'll never forget. He said, you don't need to know what to do as long as you stay in relationship with the God who knows what to That's do. Good. That's good. And so good. what I would say, you know, to pastors, you don't have to know everything. Sure. Stay in relationship with the God who knows everything. He'll direct your path. Bishop, at the final uh, final leg of our broadcast, you have a major conference coming up. People need to get there in Atlanta. Yes. The Covering Conference. Talk about it. Covering Conference uh, is going to be for the first time in Atlanta, Georgia. We've done the Covering Conference every year in Los Angeles for the last four years. This year, the Spirit of the Lord directed me to move it to the East Coast and to move it to Atlanta, August 21, 22, and 23. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's going to be at the Divine Faith Ministries with my good friend Bishop Donald Battle there of Divine Faith Ministries in Jonesboro, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I'll be sharing Bishop David Evans from the Great Bethany Church in Linden Wall, New Jersey. Bishop Battle uh, will be ministering. Uh, uh, Bishop uh, uh, William Murphy will be ministering in Song Psalmist, uh, Laren Christopher. It is literally going to be a dynamic time under the anointing of God. And the Spirit of the Lord dealt with me some years ago about what is happening right now in our nation and the covering uh, of God that comes over the people of God in strategic and critical seasons. You notice in the scriptures that God often sent prophets to widows in times of challenge. You see this in the, in the Old Covenant the relationship between prophets and widows. I studied this out some time ago, and I, and I discovered that the word widow literally means uncovered. And what the prophetic does is it releases a covering over that which is uncovered. I believe the prophetic word of God is needed in this hour like never before in our nation's history. And I'm not just talking about prophesying. Right, right. I'm talking about discerning the times, understanding what time it is, and releasing the word of God over your life. When Elijah went to the widow of Zarephath, everyone else was experiencing drought, and so was she. But when the Lord sent Elijah to her house, the word of the Lord that he released released a prophetic covering over her house so that the Bible says she and he and her house did eat. Now, everyone else was experiencing whatever the economy, whatever the weather, whatever the external situation was. So the Spirit of the Lord said to me, the covering is like the spiritual greenhouse of God. Thank you so much Bless for you, sir. being here on Lift Your Voice. And for those of you, you need to get to Atlanta. There's a greenhouse effect that's going to take place in your life. That will change the seeds God has placed in your life. I'm Pastor Mark Burns, and we'll be here again on this great network on the show.